friends and welcome to my channel if you are new or welcome back if you are back. Either way, thank you so so much for clicking on my video today. If you are new, hi, my name is Rabbit and my pronouns are they them. I was a little bit trying to do like an Emily the Strange look today, but honestly it kind of just consists of a black wig and a dress and shirt combo that I feel like she might like. Who knows? I am really excited about today's video. It's like this kind of combo of videos that I've been working on because I got into wanting to make myself some Emily the Strange themed bags. So I have this one, which will be its own separate video, and this one, which is what this video is about. And actually, this one is like a backpack animal bag and kind of based on this video that I did a while ago where I was just showing this like skill animal style plush that I made of Miles from Emily the Strange that wasn't this one, this is like a whole separate thing, um, but I had made a plush of him and I didn't make a tutorial and then I'd been really wanting to make like a backpack version of that plush and I figured, you know what, now that I've figured out kind of a pattern that works, let me film the process and upload it to YouTube for you guys to watch. So maybe if you want to make a plush of your own or a backpack style thing of your own, you can kind of follow this tutorial maybe. So this guy I made out of a pair of old leggings because I was really really inspired to make something and I wanted black fabric and the only thing that I could find that I wanted to use was these old leggings that like the knees were all poked out and they had a big hole in the crotch that I tried to repair a bunch of times and it was just like not working so super super comfy cozy leg zings into wonderful little adorable Miles plushie but you could do this in whatever kind of style plushie you want. I will give a disclaimer that this is not at all a professional style video. If you are looking for like something more professional and less swinging it, I would recommend The Stitches. They did an amazing video on how to make plushy backpacks, either from like already existing plushes or from patterns. So if you're looking for something professional, check out that. If you are looking for someone just winging it and chaotically attempting to make something that slightly resembles this, this was kind of what I was going for. Um, this is what I ended up with. I honestly, I think my mouse is really cute. I'm not gonna say one is better than the other, but I'm really, really happy with this backpack. I think it's adorable. I think the straps are wonderful. I think it's like super, super cozy and has a really special place in my heart because I made it for myself. I know he's missing the heart, but I think it kind of looked better in black and white. So if you are interested in seeing how I made this really cute backpack of a skull animal, type plush, then please keep on watching and I hope you enjoy! Alright, so I'm starting with a big piece of wrapping paper that I'm gonna draw my pattern on. I have a little reference picture in the corner and this is kind of loosely what I'm basing my design off of. I'm also laying down the zipper I'm gonna use to make sure that the backpack I make is big enough to accommodate the zipper. And first I sketch everything out with a pencil just really roughly and then use a marker to define everything more clearly. As usual, don't worry about symmetry because we're going to be folding our wrapping paper in half to cut everything out, so it doesn't really matter. As long as one side is okay, it'll be fine. Roughly sketching out the basic design for the um, backpack, I'm doing a big kind of loose body that will be able to fit my phone and wallet and a couple of other things. And then sketching out all the details that I'll be putting on with white felt, like all the bones, the rib cage. I also draw on the heart, though I don't end up using it. And for the arms and the legs, you want to draw basically the length that you want and then just double that up uh, so you can fold your fabric in half to make the arms and legs and then sketch on all the extra details. This is what my pattern is looking like when everything is more or less done. Then we can take our scissors, fold our wrapping paper in half, and cut out the pattern that we've created. Uh, just follow one side of your design and you should be okay. I'm cutting out the ears separately, but you could totally keep them together. It's up to you. And just take your time with this part. Make sure you like everything and don't be afraid to trim things down if they're looking weird or redraw the pattern if you're not happy with it. But once everything's cut out, this is what it's looking like. And I like to label everything with the amount of pieces I'll have to cut out. So everything basically gets two pieces. The body and the face get two pieces because there's a front and a back and the arms and legs get two pieces each because there are two arms and legs. Next I'm taking this old pair of leggings. I'm pinning down my pattern to the leggings and luckily they're already folded in half, but if you're using regular fabric, I would recommend um, folding it in half so you get two pieces that are cut out the exact same. Once everything's pinned down, I can just use some fabric scissors to cut everything out. Um, and I would recommend trying to use some old fabric if you have it, old bed sheets, old t-shirts, these kind of things are great for making stuffed animals, but if you have to buy fabric, that's also totally okay. And make sure you leave a seam allowance when you're cutting everything out, especially in the arms and legs. I find that tubes, 
like arm and leg tube kind of things get quite narrow when you sew them in half so you're gonna want to make them a little wider than you think you'll need them to be and of course it's doubled in half so we'll be able to fold them into kind of a tube shape next i'm cutting out my ears and my four paws as well as the body of the backpack we managed to have enough fabric for the entire backpack and not too much to waste so this is how it looks when all of my pieces are cut out i like to line it up to make sure it's all looking okay and this will look kind of lumpy bumpy weird but don't worry as soon as you get the details on it'll look much much better Basically, my next step is to sew everything shut, except leaving a little hole that I'll be able to put stuffing into everything, or the backpack, zipper, stuff like that. For everything, I am sewing it good side to good side, so I'll be able to turn it inside out and have like a nice clean seam. Except for the ears, I found that when I sewed them good side to good side and turned them inside out, the fabric I used is so thick that it didn't give me a nice point. So for the ears, I just sewed them... Uh, kind of rough side to rough side. I was really worried about sewing in the zipper since I've heard a lot of people say sewing in zippers is really hard. So instead of looking up a tutorial, what I decided to do was just pin the zipper down the fabric before I cut it and sew it in place on both sides. And then once it was fully sewn down on both sides, I just unzipped the zipper and cut it open. So it worked out well and no, it is not professional. And yes, there are better ways to install a zipper, um, but I didn't feel like looking it up. When I'm inspired, I just want to do things. I just want to go. It is what it is. This backpack is just for me, so I'm not worried about it being a little bit rough around the edges. For the feet pads, um, basically what I do is once the leg or arm is sewn into a tube, I turn it inside out and sew the round circle kind of good side to good side around the entire circumference of the interior of the arm or the leg and then when I poke it back inside out it looks quite nice. So once all of the black pieces of my backpack are cut out I can cut out the stencils for the white pieces. Like I said before I'm using some felt and I'm just using fabric glue for this project however I did find that it's having a little bit of problem sticking so in the future I may or may not add some stitching to it. Regardless, once all of my patterns are cut out, I pin them down to my white piece of felt and either sketch them out or just cut them out directly. Since it's felt, I'm not hemming any edges, so I'm not leaving any seam allowance. I'm cutting right on the line that I'm drawing, and I'm not worrying about folding the felt in half since I'm using the pattern that should be relatively symmetrical. Once everything's cut out, I can place it onto my stuffed animal to make sure that it is looking like it should. And I did try to cut out a couple of hearts, but every time I did it, I just didn't really like how it looked and I preferred the black and white version. So that's why you do not see a heart in the final version. Next, I'm taking some old stuffing from the various stuffed animal projects I have made and stuffing the arms, the legs, and the head. I'm not stuffing the body because that's where I'm gonna put my stuff and I'm not stuffing the ears because I thought they looked better flat. Once the arms and legs are stuffed, I can sew them shut inside of the backpack body. When I was sewing the entire thing shut, I left little holes where the arms and legs would go so I could sew it inside. Since the fabric is so thick, I am having to hand sew all of the arms and legs into the backpack body, but it's fine. And once all the arms and legs are on, I can kind of sew shut the top of it and sew shut the top of the head once it's been stuffed and then attach those together. I did quite a lot of stitches so that it would stay upright. I didn't want it to be like flopping all over, but if you're finding issues with that, I would recommend adding a support beam of some sort, like a chopstick maybe, or a little piece of wire. However, if you sew it on the front and the back together, it seems to hold up, in my experience. And then the ears, I forgot to leave ear holes in the head, so I'm just sewing them onto the back. Again, not professional, very rough, but this backpack's just for me, so I don't mind that it's a little bit rough around the edges. <laughs> and then I can put down my felt that I have cut out the stencils of, and place it where I think it will look good. Tuna's here to help, of course, and give her approval. She's my baby, I love her forever. And once I'm happy with the placement of everything, I am ready to glue it all down. So I'm just using some fabric glue and a bunch of needles and pins to hold it down while it dries. In the future, I may or may not be attaching some security stitches. I think it'll look okay either way. For now, since it's just in my bedroom, I'm keeping it as is. Then I leave it for about 24 hours with all the pins and needles in every part of it that is glued down. That way things don't lift and the glue can take effect 
the best it can. And once it's been a day, I can pull everything out. If things are really, really stuck in there, I recommend using a little pair of pliers. It makes the job much easier. So here is the backpack. Um, if you're just making a stuffed animal, obviously you wouldn't have to put the zipper in, and at this point you could stop, um, and your stuffed animal would be done. Congratulations. However, since it is a backpack, it's time to add some straps. So let's do that. I have this spiderweb fabric that, again, I got at the fabric store around Halloween, and I love it. I'm using a backpack that I like the length of the straps of as a reference. And I have these used buckles that I found at the thrift store that I'm using as a template, so I'm just doing double the length of the buckles as I will be folding over the strap to have a nice clean situation. And obviously there's two straps on a backpack, so I'm cutting out two of those. Next I pin it in half, good side to good side, and I can sew down the length of it so I can get that nice clean edge. Again, with straps and tubes like this, you're going to want to make them wider than you think because they do tend to get quite a lot thicker once you turn them inside out. Turning them inside out is a bit of a pain, but with a pair of tweezers and some patience, I promise you can do it. It took me a hot minute, but we did eventually get there. Um, also using like a chopstick or something to poke it out is very, very helpful in the process. Once my two long straps are done, I am also attaching two shorter straps. I just used um, this other stuffed animal backpack as my reference and it has kind of two short straps and two long straps so I'm making those and once I have them all ready to go I also have these d-rings that I found at the thrift store and I think this part took me the longest out of everything was just figuring out how to get the slider straps in. I could have just looked up a tutorial but I was being stubborn and lazy and just trying to figure it out from looking at a backpack that I had so um, yes we eventually did manage we got it in there but lots of tutorials are available if you are not sure how to put the specific straps you have onto the bag of your choice once my slider straps were all secure and on there i could sew the little strap shut this kind of shorter one at the end just use my sewing machine really quick to give it a little bit of security and then i am hand stitching it onto my backpack i would recommend trying out with just pins and needles beforehand the placement a couple times because i found that for my backpack if I wanted the head to stay up while I'm wearing it, I wanted to attach the straps right behind the ears. Originally, I wanted to put them uh, by the shoulders of the backpack, but it made the head droopy. So I found that putting the straps by the ears prevented this, um, and I would just recommend trying out some positions before you sew them down. But once you are happy with the position, you can sew them down. I am hand sewing because um, at this point everything's stuffed and I don't want to deal with the sewing machine. And it's uh, good to go. All right, well, that is all I have for you today. I really, really hope that you enjoyed Enjoyed watching me make this fun friend and I hope that maybe it inspires you to make one of your own or something similar because it's a lot of fun. So he like zips up in the back, got lots of space, can fit like phone, wallet, keys, anything I need in there and quite, quite sturdy straps. Very happy with that. So yeah, thank you again so, so much for watching. I really appreciate you spending this time with me. I really hope that this was maybe inspiring or helpful or, or maybe gave you some ideas for something that you would like to do, whether it's like this or just like a teeny tiny version of this, like a keychain. Like um, in my other tutorial, I will show you how I make this little keychain, which is like just tiny version of him. So yes, much easier. But regardless, super, super fun. And me and Miles bid you adieu. I hope you guys have a wonderful rest of the day or night or whenever you happen to be watching. And I hope to see you in the next one. Bye. Bye.